أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هذان خصمان اختصموا في ربهم فالذين كفروا قطعت لهم ثياب من نار يصب من فوق رؤوسهم الحميم يصهر به ما في بطونهم والجلود ولهم مقابع من حديد كلما أرادوا أن يخرجوا منها من غم أعيدوا فيها وذوقوا عذاب الحريق إن الله يدخل الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ولؤلؤا ولباسهم فيها حريف وهدوا إلى الطيب من القول وهدوا إلى صراط الحميد صدق الله العظيم هذان خصمان اختصموا في ربهم These are two opponents who disputed about the Lord. فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطِّعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَابٌ مِّنْ نَارٍ So for the disbelievers, garments of fire will be tailored. يُصَبُّ مِنْ فَوْقِ رُؤُوسِهِمُ الْحَمِيمِ Boiling water will be poured over their heads. يُصْهَرُ بِهِ مَا فِي بُطُونِهِمْ وَالْجُلُودِ Through which everything in their bellies as well as, well as their skin will be melted. كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ غَمٍ أُعِيدُوا فِيهَا Whenever in their anguish they will try to come out of it, they will be returned back to it. وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ And it will be said to them, taste the punishment of burning. In these few ayahs, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about those who disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they argue about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any knowledge. The beginning part of the ayah is, هَذَانِ خُصْمَانِ These are two opponents who are disputing about the Lord. Who does this refer to? Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi narrated on the authority of Sayyidina Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu saying that Rasulullah, he, he used to say, I swear by God. Kana yuqsimu qasma. He used to say that I swear by God these ayahs are revealed regarding the two groups of the battle of Badr. And especially them he named those three Sahaba Ridwanullah who were the first people to come out and to accept the challenge of the Kuffar, Hamza, Ali, and Abu Ubaidah ibn al Harith, Radiallahu Anhum Ajma'in. So Abu Zar Radiallahu Anhu used to say that this ayah refers to those people. There is also a hadith in Sahih al Bukhari, Ali Radiallahu Anhu says, I would be one of the first people who would go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and request for the judgment or request for him to make a decision between me and my opponent and that is then he was referring to the same story of the battle of Badr. Regardless of what was the specific purpose of the ayah and the background of the ayah and the revelation of the ayah. Generally the ayah refers to every group of people, kuffar and believers, who have dispute about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the previous ayahs, if you remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about those إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالصَّابِئِينَ وَالنَّصَارَى وَالْمَجُوسِ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala named different groups of kuffar. He said these people of iman and all of these groups of kuffar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the judgment between them on the day of judgment. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what he's telling us in this ayah, that these are two groups. Let me draw your attention to some of the literal meaning and some of the language of the 
ayah here that may explain the ayah in a better way. And at least in case if there is a question by anyone regarding the ayah, those questions will be answered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the form in Arabic language that is used for two people. In Arabic language there is singular, then the form is for two people, and then for plural. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hazani khasman. This is, this is the form for two. That these are two opponents, two groups. Ikhtasamu. Ikhtasamu now refers to plural. That all of them disputed. Two groups, all of them disputed about the Lord. Why the ayah doesn't say, Ha'ula'i. These are all opponents who have disputed about the Lord. Or if the ayah says, Hazani Khasman, these are two groups, then it should say, Ikhtasama. Both of them disputed about the Lord. So, the form for two is used initially, and then it goes, turns into plural. The reason for this is, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala initially is telling us that mainly there are only two groups. Islam and Kufa. These are two groups. Now, look back at the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَادُوا وَالنَّصَارَى وَالصَّابِئِينَ وَالْمَجُوسِ وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا He named six groups. Six groups of people. One of the people of Iman, five of the kuffar and mushrikeen. So therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, now He tells us, although when you look at them, there are six groups. But in reality, these are only two groups. Iman and kuffar. Two groups, but kuffar have five groups within them, so they all disputed within themselves and with the people of Iman. They all dispute about the Lord. So it's not only that these people are disputing with the people of Iman, they even dispute among themselves about the Lord. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that in reality, in the world, there, is, there are only two groups. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah of Quran al-Kareem, هُوَ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ فَمِنْكُمْ كَافِرٌ وَمِنْكُمْ مُؤْمِنٌ He created you. So some of you are believers and some are disbelievers. Two groups of people. Then within the disbelievers, there could be as many groups as there are, but they're all considered to be one group as far as disbelieving is concerned. Regardless of what their aqidah is, what their belief is, they could be very close to iman, but being close doesn't make them those people mu'min, doesn't make them believers. So after all, then these are, this is all just one group of kuffar. اِخْتَصَمُوا فِي رَبِّهِمْ They disputed about the Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the main disagreement between the people of Iman and Kufr is aqidah, is not a'mal. But a lot of times we get questions from non-Muslims regardless of their religion and their background, some of them would question why eating pork is haram in Islam. Why having four wives is allowed in Islam. Why salat and divorce is allowed in Islam. Depending on that person's background and his religion, he will have object, uh, objections about some of the rulings of Sharia. In reality, the objection, this is not the basis of the objection. If this person would believe that Allah is his drug, all the objections will go away. Therefore, the best thing when it comes to these type of discussions with non-Muslims, we should not try to go into the details of all of these different rulings. Because, for example, if you take the Jews, they have a whole book regarding their ahkam, their rulings that they are supposed to follow. You can start objecting about all of those rules. 
But for a person who is a believer of that religion, for him, whatever would come into that, in that book, because he believes this is a divine book, it came from the rock, so therefore anything that would come is accepted. Whatever that book would say, we would take it because it's from rock, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So same thing with us, that any rule that comes in Quran, in the Sharia, in the, in the Hadith, you would accept. Even if there is no understanding, we can have a good explanation. I don't mean there is not, there is no explanation, but in a situation, if any person, are because of his limited knowledge, cannot understand, we know it from Allah, we will accept it. And same thing is their situation. As the person, what does he believe in? And then, depending on his belief, then he, then he start bringing rules from the books that he believes, from the people that he believes in. And instead of objecting to that, he may not have any explanation, but he will say, no, this is what I believe in. So the main dispute is about Rabb. Who is Allah? Who is our Lord? Is He the one who sent this book? Who sent His messengers? Who sent Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is He the one that is introduced by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and by Quran? Or He is someone else? So, اختصموا في ربهم The main dispute is about عقيده about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't take this as difference of opinion. Some people have this opinion, some people have this opinion, they all are correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says no. When it comes to dispute regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which means regarding عقيده and belief, then, there is only one group that will be on the right track, and the rest of them are off. Only one group of people will be considered to be the people of Iman, and the rest of them, they will not be the people of Iman. And therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, be very careful regarding this, فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطْعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَابٌ مِنْ Those who disbelieve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the garments of the fire will be sewn for them, will be tailored for them. Which simply refers to, now these people who disputed about the Rabb subhanahu wa ta'ala and they did not get it right. They went off. They used their own opinions. They wanted to have their own understanding. And they didn't get it right. These are kuffar now. So there will be only two groups after disputing the aqidah and after discussing the aqidah and knowing the aqidah of the people there will be only two groups of people if a person is trying to compromise with aqaid with belief and he says you know I know yes my children they say this but that's fine too I think this is acceptable too there is nothing like this in aqaid in belief this is why many times people make a major mistake in understanding different groups that were du- that were divided and they deviated from the right path and they went off the track in this ummah. Very recently someone was telling me, naming one of the groups, he says, you know, just like we have four madahib or fiqh, so he says, I think there aren't only four, there are more than four. And then he started naming some of the other groups. I said to him, this is because you did not understand the difference between aqa'id and ahkam, rulings of the sharia. Make it, make, to make it simple, you did not understand the difference between different sects and those people who are within the limits of Islam and having difference of opinion. Difference of opinion is totally different than having a total different fact in Islam. So these are firaq. And they are all firaq basira because the difference, the difference with the people of Iman is of aqidah. And when the difference of aqidah would come there, then it's not a difference of just understanding 
few minor things and difference of opinion, now this is the difference of Aqeelah, Iman and Kufr. And a lot of times you see that people are having that misunderstanding that, you know, yes, just like Imam Hanifa, Imam Shafi differed, so some other groups, they also differ with that. No, this is not just that difference. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, اِخْتَصَمُوا فِي رَبِّهِمْ They're disputing about their Lord in their aqidah, in their belief. فَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا قُطِّعَتْ لَهُمْ ثِيَابٌ مِّنْ نَارٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these kuffar, they will have their clothing, their garment made out of fire. Which simply refers to that this person will be covered with fire. Just like you have a dress on your body that covers your body, same way the whole body will have fire on it. In one of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, explaining this, says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will prepare some dress of metal. So the dress is made out of metal. The fabric is metal. And you know metal how hot it gets. So this person will have his dress, which means, in other words, we may call it a box. But if you call it a box, the problem will be that box does not touch the body through, truly, uh, the whole body. So, the, uh, when you call it a dress, which means it's over the whole body. The sleeves are there, and the legs are in it, and everything is just, the metal is touching the whole body, and now it's being, being burned into the fire. يُصَبُّ مِنْ رُؤُوسِهِمُ الْحَمِيمُ the boiling water will be poured over their heads. وَلَهُمْ يُصْهَرُ بِهِ مَا فِي بُطُونِهِمْ وَالْجُلُودِ And this boiling water will be such that as it will be thrown on their heads, everything that is in their stomach and their skin, which means in and out, everything will be burned by that and يُصْهَر صَهَر means to melt. Everything will be melted by that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith which is in Sunan al-Tirmidhi that when this boiling water will be poured over their heads it will go into their body and it will start burning everything and it will be so hot that it will start just uh, ripping the whole body until it will get to the feet, and even the feet, the water will be coming off this person's feet. And then the body will be put together, and again, the water will be thrown on his head. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this hadith is also in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, that when people will be in Jahannam, they will get hungry. حَتَّى يَعْدِلُوا مَا بِهِمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ They will be so hungry that they will feel that this punishment of being hungry is as bad as being burned into the fire. They won't be able to decide which of the two punishments is worse than the other. This is how hungry they would be. And I don't think we really have experience that being in that position of being that hungry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But there are people living in the same world and in the same time and they are experiencing those things, those situations where for days they may not get anything to eat. Where these people maybe after some days finding themselves to be forced to go to a garbage can and find something, something to eat. <coughs> Yes, there are people that are living on that. And they are just like us. They are people like us. It's not because they are more sinners than us. In fact, because of our situation that Allah is just giving us, giving us, and giving us, we don't realize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us. And then the person starts getting out of control. 
you start thinking about sins only when the person's belly is full. Once that's empty and the person has to really suffer, he can't even go to sleep, he won't think of watching a movie. He can't even sleep at this time. When he sees his children are crying, he won't enjoy going out and doing haram. He knows his children are crying at home. He has to go out and look for a glass of milk for his children. This is why in many of the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam warned us that when you are full, at that time you start thinking, then shaitan starts playing with your mind. So he said, be very careful that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses you with these blessings, don't start rejecting the deen of Allah. And you see a lot of people. I'm sure at this time and at this age, we know a lot of people. Very great family. You look at their parents. Subhanallah, so, such virtuous parents. That they must have been an example in the whole community for their virtuousness. But, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors of this dunya to the family. Now, you see the whole family is just, the parents are still are sitting on their musalla, but no one else in the family. They don't even like to see a musalla in their home. They try to hide the musalla, they are ashamed to have it. So, this is when a person is full, but that's another topic by itself. The point I was mentioning here is, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in this hadith which is in Sunnah al-Tirmidhi Hatta ya'adilu ma bihim min al-adab People in Jahannam will get so hungry that if this going through that starvation it will be equivalent to being burned into that fire. So these people will beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for food. They will be given some type of food of a tree that grows in Jahannam. لَيْسَ لَهُمْ طَعَامٌ إِلَّا مِنْ ضَرِيعٍ It's called ضَرِيعٍ in Quran. The explanation of ضَرِيعٍ is a very bitter tree that is full of thorns. The person is so hungry, he knows he can't get anything besides this. So they will try to eat that, knowing it's very bitter. And they see all the thorns that are on it. They will still try to eat it. As they would put it in their mouth, it will be so painful, but still this person would like to swallow it. And it will stuck in his throat. Imagine if you are eating a fish, and one of those thorns gets stuck into the throat. This is the whole thing is getting stuck into the throat. They will beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for water. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, They will be given hamimin wa ghassa, boiling water. And they will call it water. In reality it's not water. This is the puff and the blood of the people of Jahannam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says it will be so boiling that by the time the glass is just presented to the person is on a distance from this person's face because of the heat of the glass his lips will burn and fall up. And still the food is stuck in his throat and he would like to get it out so he will still try to drink the water. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that as he will try to take it, drink it, it's going to just melt everything in the stomach and everything will start falling off. So this is the azab of the akhirah. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning. The ayah that still continue. وَلَهُمْ مَقَامِعُ يُصْحَرُ بِهِ مَا فِي بُطُونِهِمْ وَالْجِلُودِ This boiling water, water through the boiling water. Or their everything in their stomach and their skins will be melted. 
وَلَهُمْ مَقَامِعُ مِنْ حَدِيدٍ And for them, there are iron roads. There will be hummers. مَقَامِعْ mean refers to iron roads or a hummer. So they will have hummers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they will be used for what? كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ غَمٍ أُعِيدُوا فِيهَا Whenever they will try to come out of the Jahannam, they will be thrown back into the Jahannam by these hummers. So there will be the uh, angels will be standing there at the entrance of Jahannam with these big hummers. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, which is in Musnad Ahmad and Abu Ya'la, and rated on the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put that hummer into, uh, that hummer into the, this world, the whole people of the world will not be able to carry it. This is how heavy it is. When these people, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continues to say that it's such a heavy that if you hit a mountain with it, that mountain with one hit will become dust. Those type of hammers will be used for these people in Jahannam. كُلَّمَا أَرَادُوا أَنْ يَخْرُجُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ غَمْرٍ وَعِيدُوا فِيهَا Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains this also in a hadith that when people will be thrown into the fire they will keep on getting into the depth of it it's fire so they keep on getting into the depth of fire as far as the depth there is a hadith narrated by Imam Siyuti rahmatullahi alayhi says that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw something like a bull from the heavens to this earth, it will get here within a day. With all the distance that we have between this earth and the heavens. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw the same thing into Jahannam, it will take that object 70,000 times before it can get to the depth of it. Before it will get to the depth of Jahannam. So imagine the difference, the, the depth of Jahannam. And even that Jahannam will be getting full. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees in Quran al kareem in Surah Qaf, explaining the same depth of Jahannam, all the people of the world, which means the disbelievers, munafiqeen, sinners, will be thrown into Jahannam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will add the Jahannam, Halim talati, are you full? And the Jahannam will say, Hal mim mazid, is there any more? You can throw more. This is the death of Jahannam. And finally, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Jannah and Jahannam, both of these places, they will be full. Which means, all the people from the beginning of the creation till the end to the last person, each and every person will have to go to one of these two places. No way of getting away from it. Anyone came to life will have to get to one of these two places. Even a miscarriage. A child who came into the world without any life, any life even since it became a being, it came as an existence as a human being, that's it. It will have to come back to life, and it will have to go there. And of course, we know that from the hadith, that they will go to Jannah. So, the hadith, we were talking about the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, that these people that will be thrown into Jahannam, they will keep on getting into the depth of it. And while they are going down and deeper and deeper in Jahannam, and they are getting burned, all of their mean and the flesh of the body will start falling off. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will apply another punishment on people while they are in Jahannam. And that is itching. So imagine a person is getting burned and is itching. So as he itches his soul, his flesh is falling off. Imagine the pain. Without the skin pulling off, just aging too much, it hurts. 
So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that they will be going to the depth of Jahannam. And they are itching and they are, the, the flesh is falling off the body. Now this person has only bones. And Jahannam is boiling. So as the Jahannam boils, this person would be coming up again. With boiling of the Jahannam, so the, the Jahannam will be just pulling, pushing this person up. As it would push it up, the angels are standing there and they will hurt the person with those iron rods by which this person will be going back towards the depth of Jahannam. And this will continue being happening to the person. And this is of course without going to the details of all different types of azab of Jahannam. This is only we are talking about the words that are used in this ayah of Quran. Otherwise there are many ahadith that go into the depth of explaining of different types of azab of Jahannam. So before we go further with it and go to the next ayah, let us answer this question also. Why such a severe punishment? Why such a severe punishment? Why it couldn't be any lighter punishment than this one? It's very simple. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made following the deen very simple and very easy. مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجِ He didn't put any difficulties in this deen for you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this deen available to all the people. If anyone did not hear about it, that's totally different story. Then these ayahs are not for those people. This is for those who know that this deen does exist. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the deen simple and easy. And following the deen is also very simple and easy. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly have explained all of these things to all the people of the world that look, if you follow what I have told you, you follow my messengers, you will get these things. If you don't follow, this is what you would get. You decide which direction you want to go. And people of their own choice, they are deciding to go to that direction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not throwing any person there. People are just heading to that direction by choice. Now, let's present a situation in different words. And that is, there is a highway where there was a bridge and the bridge is broken now. The bridge, the bridge was damaged. And people were warned, don't go, don't use this highway because that bridge is there which is not in a safe situation. And there are some cars that fell off this bridge. If you fall off this bridge, underneath there is this, this and that. And you tell them all the details, put similar type of details of telling them there. Now someone goes there and he falls off the bridge. He gets into that type of situation that was already explained to him. And he starts complaining and his family members are complaining out there who are not in there. They are also complaining. Why does he have to go through all of this down there? Why didn't you people make it easier for him? No one made it difficult for him either. He wasn't supposed to go there. He knew that he could fall if he go that direction. And he fell. So who's, who's to be blamed for it? This is what he chose for himself. He was told that these things are there. And if he's going to fall, this is what will happen to him. He took the risk. He took the chance. Or he decided that he is going to fall and he wants to fall there. It was his decision. Same way. People are deciding by, they, they all, by their own choice they are heading towards Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already told us that these deeds will lead you to Jahannam. And so, if people are choosing that for themselves, they can't question them. They shouldn't question. Their relatives that are back here and they hear these ayahs, they shouldn't question. This is what they chose for themselves. 
so it's really a matter of choosing one of the two directions and as far as the direction to towards Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very simple and easy. Simple and easy simply means if a person would really love to go into that direction, yes, he may have some difficulties in this life, but is it difficult to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it that you have to keep on begging, begging, begging and do so much and give up everything and then at the end he will tell you, I will think about it? There is nothing like this. It's so simple. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if a person is disbeliever, which means committed the worst sin that exists in this world, that is shirk. person is disbeliever. He was doing shirk throughout his life. After 60, 70 years of that life of shirk, and he may be inviting people to shirk, and he's doing all of that, the worst thing that is, that is in existence. And finally, one day this person thought that, no, I don't want to continue with this. And he says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. What else does this person have to do to get all of those sins of the past 70 years washed, washed away from him? Anything else? That's it. Everything is gone by one word. How long did it take? To say this kalima. So if it is so simple, now you think about it yourself. If it is so simple, why people are not just washing everything away? Now, a mu'min. Of course, if this is how simple it is for a kafir, do you think for a mu'min it will be more difficult or easier? Very simple. We all can understand this. That if Kafir can get his sins washed away and the worst sins washed away in such a simple way that doesn't even take him a minute. Do you think Allah will make it more difficult for the people of Iman? There is no way. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith that a person who says astaghfirullah just this word. With sincerity, of course. Just like even a kafir has to say it with sincerity. A person who just begs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness once. He has committed so many sins. Astaghfirullah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith. Attaibu min al-zam kaman la zambala. A person who asks forgiveness for his sins is just like a person who has never committed a sin. So let's put two people together now. One is a person who never committed a sin. On the other hand, there is a person who committed a lot of sins. But every time he commits a sin, he says, Ya Allah, please forgive me. It was my mistake. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, As far as sins are considered, both of these people are equal in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all sin. Both of them are sinless. The one who never committed one, and the one who continues committing it, but with sincerity, he returns to Allah, and he begs Allah for forgiveness. They both are equal. Could there be a simpler way? Can we make anything easier than this? Now, if a person doesn't even want to take this opportunity, and he decided he doesn't want to do his taqwa, he just wants to continue committing sins, and he doesn't care about his taqwa. Then, of course, if he throws himself into that situation, the blame goes only back to him. No one else is to be blamed for that situation. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us both of these directions. And they told us what these directions would lead us to. So, now, it's everyone's choice. People would choose. They want to go this way, or they want to go that way. We choose that direction for our souls. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accordingly, He will treat us, okay, this is where, what you wanted, this is what you get. And our person, you wanted this, this is what you get. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really, it's only suitable that if He gives us the reward, His reward will be the highest. And that is, of course, Jannah. 
No one in this world can tell us that I can give you better than Jannah. There is nothing. So his reward has to be the highest. It only fits Allah that he gives us when he rewards us. He gives us something that is the highest in that field. And if he punishes someone, then his punishment should be the worst. So that no one can tell you, don't worry about that punishment. If you don't do what I'm telling you, I will punish you. And my punishment will be more severe than the punishment of Allah. No one should be able to tell you that. Then don't be afraid of the punishment of Allah because my punishment is more severe than the punishment of Allah. So he only suits Allah and befit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever he's giving, it has to be the highest. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore mentions these things and he mentions them. It's not that he's hiding them. Okay, if you do this, you don't know what you, what kind of punishment I will give you, but it's very severe and I won't tell you what it is. No, he told us what it is. So, everything has been made very clear in Quran al-Kareem and in their hadith. Now, for our benefit, we must also look at the practical point from this ayah. And that is, whenever any of these thoughts would come to our mind, leading us towards sin, towards this obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right away we should ask our souls, can I take this? Can I take that boiling water into Jahannam? Can I take that Jahannam? And if the shaitan says, don't worry about it, let's try to take a shower with boiling water. See if we can. Or let's try to just put your fingertip into a fire, into a stove, and see what happens as it has been narrated about one of the scholars sitting in the masjid and is studying someone knocked at the door it was raining heavy outside and he opens the door to find that there was a woman standing at the door of the masjid and she says it's raining so heavy so I can't make it anywhere I have to find a refuge here so of course he can't reject it he allows her she comes and sits in the masjid while he's studying he had a lamp next to him and of course, you know, they used to have something like candle. So, there is a fire in that limb. Every some time, he puts his finger into that fire. At the end of the night, in the morning, she asked him that, I saw something very strange about you. You were sitting in the middle of your cities every some time, you would put your finger into that fire. So he said, while I was sitting, of course, Shaitan started throwing different thoughts in my head because you were sitting there. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, مَا خَلَى رَجْلٌ بِإِمْرَهِ إِلَّا وَكَانَ الشَّيْطَانُ ثَالِكُهُمَا When there is only man, one man and woman, the third person there is Shaitan. So he's saying, these thoughts started coming to my mind. So I was telling myself here, if you can take this, then you do whatever you want. Then you can take the adab of the akhirah. See if you can take this much burning on your finger only. And if you can't take it, then you just do what you are supposed to do. Stay away from it. A reminder for the person, for our souls. That I can't even take this much. How can I take that azab of the akhirah? So this is the reminder for our souls. When, whenever shaitan comes and he tries to <coughs> take us towards these sins and open the doors towards these sins for us, we should remind ourselves of these ayahs. And these ayahs will be very helpful in keeping us away from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after the sea, finishing these ayahs, He says, وَذُوقُوا عَذَابَ الْحَرِيقِ And these people in the Jahannam will be uh, told that face the punishment of burning. On the other hand now, the people of Iman, this is normally when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the people of Azab, then the people of, of Kufr facing the Azab, then it mentions the, uh, what the people of Iman will be getting. So, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدْخِلُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will admit those who believe and do good deeds. And in the previous session, we talked into some detail about Iman and Amal al-Salih. They go together. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here again mentions the same thing. Allah will admit those who have iman and they do the good deeds into virgins. Beneath which rivers flow. They will be given bracelets of gold and pearls in, in, in the uh, Jannah. وَلِبَاسُهُمْ فِيهَا حَرِيرٌ And their dress in Jannah will be of silk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning some of the blessings of Jannah. And two things that he has mentioned here is, one thing is that they will have bracelets. And the other thing is, dress will be silk. The question comes, is these ayahs referring to women only? No. These ayahs are talking about men. That even men will have bracelets made of gold. Number one, having a bracelet in this world. Having a bracelet for men is haram. Number two, gold is haram too. So you double the thing. Number three, silk. Dress of silk. And that is haram in this life. So the ayah is simply explaining to us, that all of these things that are haram, they will become halal in akhirah. In Jannah, these things will be allowed. And these things won't be, won't be forbidden for men. But still, for us, who are not used to wearing these things, now the question comes, would it look good on me to have bracelets? Regardless of what they're made of. For those who keep on uh, say a lot with the, with, with the other side, they love to have these things, earrings, bracelets, necklace. But of course, for those who are not used to it, like as for those who are not used to this, right away you think that, would it suit me to have bracelets? And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, two things, the material of these bracelets, gold and pearls. And in Surah Al-Dahar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there will be some brasses of silver also. So which means all of these different things, the jewelry that, uh, that is forbidden, gold, silver, and things that are forbidden in this dunya, men will be wearing them in Akhirah. And they will be wearing this type of jewelry. What it should, that's the question. And in reality, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is really telling us here, that in this world, Women normally wear these things. Why? The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created both the sex differently. Men are not created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the body, the design of the man's body in this world is not that you just stay home, just do light work. You're supposed to be active. You're supposed to be strong. Go out, do the work. Don't just sit home and say, I'm tired, I have a headache, I have back pain, I have... My legs are hurting today. No, just get out. Do your work. Don't just wear the bracelets and sit there. This doesn't suit a man. But in Akhirah, there is no work. In Jannah, there is no work. Sit and rest. And there will be workers doing all kind of work for you. And you don't even need them. So it's only to have someone do things for you. To keep you. You're so okay, satisfied and busy here, I'll tell him to do this. Otherwise, you think of having something and you got it. So more luxurious wife, life than your wife has in this world. If you're allowing her to have that Islamic life. Here we can also understand what type of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prescribing for women. According to the Quran and the Sharia. Similar life, the one that you have in Jannah. See, all of these things are allowed for her, for, uh, for her here. Which means, light work. With all of these things, nothing will happen to those jewelries. They will still be intact. They will still have their color. They won't, uh, their colors, uh, uh, nothing will happen to the, the design, to the color, to that makeup, and nothing. No, it's such a light work that you just do these simple things. For you, if you wear it, you know, one day, on the day of Eid, you wear good clothing, you don't want to do work. No one wants to do the work on the day of Eid, uh, especially 
if it is a hard work, if it is a work outside. So, that is the different types of work. So in Jannah there is no work. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be giving us and every person that goes to the Jannah that comfortable life where a person over there is living this type of life where you just be sitting, now you keep on beautifying your souls and just relax, sit, don't do nothing, that's your life over there. So with that, then these things will suit the person also. And then we know in the hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when people will go to Jannah, in this world, for men Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed beard. In Jannah, as people will go to Jannah, there will be no beard, no hair on the face. So now, the bracelet may fit. <laughs> but with this, it doesn't fit. So, you see that all the descriptions will go together. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, that this, is, this will be the life of the people of Jannah. Very comfortable life, luxurious, luxurious life, and just enjoy, enjoy your life, enjoy your time over there. وَلِبَاسُهُمْ فِيهَا حَرِيرٌ وَهُدُوا إِلَى الطَّيِّبِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَهُدُوا إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْحَمِيدِ And they were guided to the good words. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mentioned two descriptions now of the people of Iman, of the people of Jannah. That these people of Jannah, their situation in that world was that هُدُوا إِلَى الطَّيِّبِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ They were guided to good words. And Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu explained good words as لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله and the recitation of Quran. Of course, this is the highest level of good words. And then, simply Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept it general, which means that this is the description of the people of Jannah. You want to see those who would, go, would be going to Jannah in Akhirah? You see them in this world? Those are the people who only say good words. They don't have the habit of cursing, of using bad words, of just hurting others with their words, of accusing others. These are the people who always use good words. So, this is what a great description that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for the people of Iman, of the people of Jannah. They are guided to the good words. So, this is, to, uh, this is really uh, something that we need to, a habit that we need to develop within our souls, that make sure that every word that we utter is good words. We are not using those curse words as a passion that, okay, you know, to be in, to show that you are something, you know the language, you have to keep on using these words. No. Good words. Always, this should be the habit of a person. And, if you don't know what to say, if you don't have a good word, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, which is in Sahih al-Bukhari, man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. Whoever believes in Allah in the last day, فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا Awliya yasmut should say something good or be quiet. Just remain quiet. Don't say nothing. And look at the strength of the hadith. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. Whoever believes in Allah and the last day. Then his duty is to say something good or not to say nothing. Or not to say anything. That's it. Stay quiet. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is making it so strong that if you believe in Allah in the last day, which means this is a sign of iman. This is this is what I, this ayah is telling us. Very same thing. Hudu ila tayyibin ila qawl. Description of the people of Jannah that in this world they were guided to the right words, to the good words. And then if you want to go into much more details of the benefit of the good words, go to those ayahs. أَلَمْ تَرَ كَيْفَ ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا كَلِمَةً طَيِّبَةً كَشَجَرَةٍ طَيِّبَةً أَصْلُهَا ثَابِتٌ وَصَرْعُهَا فِي السَّمَاءِ If you go into that, then it will take us a long time. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, briefly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those ayahs is giving us the example of a good word. He says it's just like a good tree. A tree that is very deep, has deep roots, and such a strong roots that it can stand, stand uh, take the weight of the tree, and the tree was grown all the way up to the sky. This is how tall the tree is. If the roots are not that strong, then the tree is going to fall with that height. It's not easy to have a pillar 
If you keep a pillar into the earth, that will be that long, and then it won't fall with the wind and with anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, good words that you speak, they are just like that tree. That has such strong roots that it can stand, and it will be all the way up to the heavens. Uh, this good words will always be keeping, giving good, good fruits. People will benefit from your good words. You are always giving good fruits. وَهُدُوا إِلَى طَيِّبِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ They were guided to the good words. وَهُدُوا إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْحَمِيدِ And they were guided to the path of the praised one, which means to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the word صِرَاطِ الْحَمِيدِ To the path of the praised one. This attribute of Allah is used here. Why? Because... When a person would follow that path, you will be praised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will mention the good things about you to the angels, as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says in a hadith, which is hadith Qudsi, that a person who remembers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, a person who remembers me in his gathering, I remember him in a gathering that is better than his gathering, and that is the, angel, the gathering of angels. وَهُدُوا إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْحَمِيدِ And they will be guided to the path of the praised one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to these, this is the path of the good words and to the path of Iman. Aqulu qawli hadha wa istaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lisa'il muslimin wa lisa'il muslimat wa akhbar wa anah alhamdulillah.